everyone. Welcome to Frappe School. My name is Lynette Sharon and this is the second chapter in our website management course. Today, we will be discussing the web pages and themes. By the end of this chapter, you will know creating web pages, applying web themes, creating sidebars and slideshows. A web page serves information on a specific topic. The home page is the first page that opens on your website. This page can give an overview of your company. Apart from about us and contact us pages, you can create dedicated web pages for various topics like products, events, legal, jobs, etc. You can also create themes to make sure your website is in sync with your overall branding. You can use the same color, font size, font type to maintain a consistent look and feel. You can also write small snippets of scripts to build some interactivity on your website. Slideshows can be added to allow visitors to interact with your pages. Essentially, the goal is to serve all the relevant information to your website visitors and make it easy for them to discover it. Let's see how to create web pages and themes using ERP Next. In the previous chapter, we learned how to configure static content on a web page or website like home page, contact us and about us. Although these settings and pages are readily available on ERP Next, we can create our own web pages as well. We can access the web page list from the website module under website section or even search for it in the awesome bar. Here, we can see any pre-created web pages and add a new one by clicking on add web page. The first thing we will do is set a title for our web page. The title is important when it comes to search engines. Therefore, we need to make sure that we choose a title that reflects any targeted keywords or audiences. The route, which is a URL, will be automatically generated from the title we choose, but we can change it as per our preference as well. The dynamic route checkbox helps us to define our own route. We can also add a slideshow to this web page if we want. Let's select one that we've already created. Next, we can select the published checkbox to publish this page on our website and use the full width checkbox to ensure that the website covers the entire screen. The show title checkbox helps us configure if we want the title name to be shown on the web page or not. If yes, then we can select this checkbox. We can even schedule the publishing of this web page by adding a start and an end date here. The web page will be automatically unpublished when outside the date range. We can write our content in rich text, markdown, HTML, or using Page Builder. We shall learn more about them in the next chapter. For now, we shall explore how content can be added using HTML script here. Here's a quick example. Now that we have our content in place, we shall see what enhancements can be made to this web page. First, we can add some context to the script written. Context gives us the liberty to render dynamic data to a web page, which means we can write a line of code if we want to fetch dynamic data from the doc type. We can also add a JS script to our web page in the script section. In the style section, we can add CSS styling to this web page. We will need to inspect the elements to see what classes are available for styling. So, if HTML content is being used, 
we can use our own classes and style them here. Let's click on See on Website in the sidebar to view the web page. Moving on to the sidebar and comments section. First, we will have to select the Show Sidebar checkbox to enable it. Then, we can either pick an existing website sidebar here or create a new one with custom links. When creating a new one, we need to add a title for the sidebar and items in the sidebar items table along with their title, route and group. We can enable comments on our web page for visitors to leave their name and email and set a priority level as well. In the meta tags section, we can even add meta tags to our web page. Meta tags are small pieces of text that describe the web page's content. The meta tags can't be seen on the web page but are found in the page's source code. They help tell search engines about the nature of the web page. We can also use the Add Custom Tags button to add custom meta tags. We will need to enter a property key and its value in the table here and it will auto-generate HTML meta tags for the web page. Once we save the web page, we will be able to see a header and breadcrumb section and add custom HTML for the header section. This will override the title of the web page. We can also add a list of breadcrumbs on the page. A breadcrumb or breadcrumb trail is a type of secondary navigation scheme that reveals any user's location in a website or web application. These will be shown on top before the header. We can view our web page by clicking on See on Website in the sidebar. ERP Next provides advanced configuration features that allow us to customize the look and feel of our website using themes that match the organization. To see website themes, we can go to the website module and find it under the setup section or even search using the awesome bar. Here, we can see a list of existing themes and create a new one using the add website theme button here. First, we will have to add a name for the theme. The module field will be automatically filled. Now, we can configure the theme. The theme configuration section is used for bootstrapping a basic theme. We can choose different features to detail and make our theme look better. We can select a Google font and a font size. The font properties will be generated automatically. For more features, we can use the checkboxes below. These will help us define small details like whether we want the buttons on our website to have rounded corners or shadows or have a gradient. We can select and unselect these checkboxes according to our preferences. We can also define colors to our theme using the primary color, text color, light color, dark color and background color fields. Additionally, we can manually add a style sheet and write custom CSS here. In the custom overrides field, we can override the variables defined by any app's theme file. The content of this field will be included before importing any other SCSS. In the custom SCSS field, we can add our own styles and even override any specific styles. 
we can also write custom javascript here that will run when this theme is applied we can use it to add or remove classes from elements or any script that helps change how the elements look once we've added all the details we can save this document once we save this document we can see in the style sheet section that the theme is generated these are the default theme files for frappe and erp next app if we have any other apps installed they might also provide their own website css file by using the check boxes we can choose which theme should be included in our website now let's add this theme to our website settings and view the changes This brings us to the end of the second chapter in our website management course. I hope this helped you understand how to create web pages and themes using ERP Next. You can read more about this on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss creating web pages and the page builder. Thank you.